stroke volume refers to the amount of blood that is pumped out of the uh, out of the heart per liter and it increases from training so it allows for the same amount of blood to be pumped around the body with fewer intract uh, with fewer contractions so this is basically when after training you are essentially um getting fitter right and your and your body and your sorry in your heart is able to pump out more blood with fewer contractions so that is what an increase in stroke volume refers to cardiac output refers to the amount of blood which is pumped out of the heart per minute so the difference between stroke volume and cardiac output is that stroke volume is amount of blood that is pumped out per liter and then cardiac output is uh, blood that is pumped out per minute and essentially it increases from training and that is a direct result of stroke volume as well so if you are um able to for example if you're able to pump out more blood uh with fewer contractions that would also mean that you're able to pump out more blood per minute so as a result of that you know we can see how stroke volume and cardiac output are related and cardiac output also allows for faster and more efficient blood transportation. So once um see so yeah, an increase for train so it increases from training and um we see that the process becomes more faster and efficient as well. Oxygen uptake, so as the name suggests, oxygen uptake um refers to the body's ability to absorb oxygen through the lungs and into the blood and increase and it increases from training as well allows for faster and more efficient oxygen delivery to working muscles so if you have any questions please feel free to ask no question is a silly question okay so let's have a look um at some more physiological adaptations so lung capacity now lung capacity is basically the lung size and lung size does not change from training so that is something um to keep in mind it, i mean there could be a little change if any at all but um generally we don't see a change in the size of your lungs but um the vital capacity so the air that you breathe out after deep breaths that increases slightly as a result as a result of training and um mm the residual volume which is the air that cannot be moved out of the lung that decreases slightly so um that means so when you breathe out like there's still some air that's left in there that can't be moved out but if you are training that will decrease slightly tidal volume that refers to the air which is breathed which is breathed in and out during your normal um respirations so when you're normally just breathing in and out you know not doing any deep breaths or anything that's your tidal volume and the tidal volume is unchanged during rest and submaximal exercise it kind of remains the same hemoglobin levels on the other hand hemoglobin um is the molecule that binds with o2 and transports oxygen around the body um oh, sorry yeah to, uh, transports it around the blood and then you know through that to the body and it increases as a result of training so it elevates the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood and as a result of that we are able to maintain higher intensity thresholds so if you've got more oxygen going around to your body because there's more hemoglobin present in your blood so remember the oxygen can latch onto the hemoglobin it can travel around more and so obviously that is going to lead to you being able to maintain high intensity threshold the resting heart rate is the um beats per minute at rest um aka you know the sleeping heart rate for example and as a result of training the resting heart rate should decrease so this is where um like your elite athletes would have like i think um a average resting resting heart rate of like i think 40 40 to 50 beats per minute in compare or even and i think even like 30 to 40 beats per minute as well um the resting heart rate of a normal person is um around 70 70 80 uh, if i'm not wrong I, I think 70 is 70 is up there 70 to 80 so it happens because of an increase in the stroke volume and because of an increase in the hemoglobin level as well so because you are pumping out more blood um with fewer contractions you don't need as many contractions you don't need as many um 
as many beats to actually send out that blood and you also have more hemoglobin present to which oxygen can latch onto and you can send more oxygen around your body um and so that is then got and so you don't need so yeah because of the higher rates of hemoglobin in the blood and you being able to pump out more blood that is going to cause a decrease in heart rate and those and both of them will increase as a result of training so heart rate will decrease um and heart does not have to contract as much to meet the you know metabolic needs that is why we see the heart rate decrease because we are so because as an athlete we're bec we are becoming more efficient um in 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 our stroke volume and also in increasing um our hemoglobin levels Awesome, let's move on then. So further physiological adaptations include muscular hypertrophy. So muscular hypertrophy is basically um, when you've got, um, as a result of training, there is an increase in the cross-sectional area, cross area of muscle. So there's an increase in the size of your muscle. So when you, after you do, like for example, if you've been doing resistance training for long, you would have bigger muscles than someone who doesn't do resistance training, for example. And that is because there's an increase in the muscle tissue. And the fancy word here is um, myofibrillus. So myofibrillus is the component which is actually responsible responsible for muscular contraction. Now the larger the myofibrillus, the larger the um, myocorsite. So those are your muscle cells and the more for and they can actually lead to your muscles producing more force as well. So ultimately muscular hypertrophy will increase as a result of um, of strength training and it will cause an increase in muscular endurance and strength as well so if you've got bigger mus if you've got bigger muscles you'll have um more strength and more endurance too looking at fast twitch muscle fibers now so fast so the effect of uh, the effect on fast twitch fibers as a result of training white fiber so fast twitch fibers are your white fibers um that is because the blood supply is um very low and they don't have much mitochondria either so white muscle fibers um they take a shorter time to reach peak force and the fatigue faster so someone who is for example a marathon runner so sorry someone who is a hundred meter sprint runner they would have a high proportion of fast twitch muscles in comparison to red twitch muscles because fast twitch muscles um yeah so there's firstly there's no change to the percentage of fast twitch muscles it is sort of generally what you have um and some muscles would have more fast twitch than slow twitch fibers some muscles would have it the other way around so for example um your calf muscles would generally have more fast twitch than slow twitch fibers um and yeah there's sorry no they would have slow twitch fibers more than fast twitch fibers generally and gen like for both of them there's after training there is no change to the percentage of fast twitch fibers so the opposite of that is our slow twitch fibers now these are red fibers that actually sustain force for an extended period of time but cannot generate um, a significant amount of force so no change to the percentage of slow twitch fibers as a result of training and uh, increased use of slow twitch fibers will actually lead to increased muscle efficiency and larger aerobic thresholds so that's why your calf muscles would have more fast twitch fibers because you need to you know stand for example um if you are yeah like working um or at school as well you know if you have to like move around all day and generally um if you're standing up all day moving around you will have more fast twitch muscle fibers so muscle fibers so that um they can be sustained for that long 